Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is Karim, an international medical student and an intern at Ain Shams University at Cairo. Uh, I recently took step 2 exam, uh, August 2025, and I scored 279, which is about 100 percentile. And I wanted to share my experience. Of course, everyone's experience is different, but hopefully it will help someone out there looking for guidance. Now, a little bit of background first. I took step 1 exam on July 2023, and I was scoring uh, from 80 to 90 percentile on the NBMEs. And really the reason I did this is that I wanted to build a basic uh, for step 2 uh, and I knew that it would make my life a little bit easier knowing uh, each disease as a part of physiology of it and how it happened at the first place before going into the step 2 things about knowing the first line or knowing these algorithms and of course it did it also helped me a little bit doing some YouTube videos, Reddit posts about high yield concepts and doing some side hustles as tutoring, for example. Uh, after I took step one exam, uh, I was working this part time job as tutor and I started uh, UO World in step two. I didn't do any content review, I just jumped into questions. And the first Q bank I did was UO World and I was scoring about 75th percentile and spending uh, most of the time just trying to understand and memorize these algorithms and these first lines that were a little bit non-existent in step one. Uh, after that, I followed uh, a fellow advice called Yusuf Tanas. He's a great guy um, and he said that the key to get a high score is doing as much questions as possible. Of course, it sounds cliche, but not a lot of people realize this and some of us just look to review some random stuff, uh, hoping that it will help us uh, someday. Uh, he scored uh, the highest uh, score in step one, so I took his advice for granted. And I started uh, doing another Q bank, which was Ambos. I did Ambos and I was scoring about 80%. And before I did Ambos, uh, I took NBME 6 and I scored 264. This was after the first of us of the world. And then after I did Ambos, I took the Ambos self assessment, which is a very good self assessment, by the way and I scored 268. Then I started my dedicated period, which is seven weeks. The first four weeks uh, was a little bit extreme. I don't know if it was worth it or not. I did a second debus of UOLED and AMBUS, which was scoring about 90% in UOLED and 93, 94 in AMBUS. And I did the CMS forms, which I didn't found them very helpful because they were easy, but sometimes they were big. The exam was not that big sometimes. The exam gave you a lot of keywords and the exam was a little bit more clear. Uh, it, it wouldn't confuse you, uh, for example, in a person with appendicitis, if you would do surgery or you would do ultrasound. You know, it's just a little bit clear when it comes to the guidelines of asthma, diabetes and all of this stuff. And that's why I didn't find the CMS forms that helpful, but I was scoring from 85 to 90s in these forms. After this, I, would, uh, I was doing step 3 world, and I find it a little bit helpful. It's just 2,000 uh, question, and it helped me in this thing called the prognosis, where they ask you about the prognosis on the exam of a specific disease. I didn't find a lot of questions in step 2 asking about it, uh, but I found a lot in step 3, and it also helped me in this uh, biostatistics and uh, research questions and some of the communication ones uh, that I wanted really to practice more and more because I knew these are the ones that usually uh, differentiate between like 260 and 270. After I did uh, step three, I started my last three weeks of dedicated periods just doing the NBMEs. And while doing the NBMEs, I was just trying to focus on the test taking strategies and what uh, can I do to get into the mind of the examiner and what I really got from there is that he just wants to know if you know this information or not. He's just not trying to play games with you. If you see a person with uh, diabetes and he prescribed SGL2 inhibitors, he really wants to know the side effect, which is urinary tract infection. He doesn't want to confuse, confuse this SGL2 with another drug that's non existent in the world. Uh, this was helpful knowing this uh, because. 
I started to answer things a little bit more uh, clearly and not trying to overthink stuff. Another important stuff that I found is that uh, when the vignette is a little bit very hard, usually the answer choices are not, and usually they are very distinguishable from each other. And this helped me answer the questions that I found. It's the first time I see them, I was just, just making the most clear answer or the answer that's usually found more or more common in the real world. Um, after I did the NBMEs, I was scoring from 273 278 and then I took the last two days off before the exam I didn't sleep uh, at the day of the exam I slept about four to five hours which for me is not that much <laughs> because I use uh, I, I used to sleep about eight hours and I went into the exam took about three Red Bulls and just went to the bathroom literally every block from the energy drinks that I drank and I even took a break after the 15 minutes tutorial. So yeah, it was a little bit of a nightmare. But the exam itself was a little bit doable. It was similar to free 120, uh, which is I, I scored about uh, 88, I think, in the free 120. I scored 90 in the old one and 99 on the old, old one. And the, free, uh, and the newest one was very similar to the exam, even you will see some repeated concepts. And don't panic if you see the same concept, they literally repeat every block in the exam. Don't you change the answer, this is pretty normal, either in step one or step two. Uh, I went out of the exam, uh, I didn't know what I did. I, I, I felt either I did very well or I was just delusional and I completely crashed the exam. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Uh, to God, I, uh, the exam was good and uh, the results was even uh, better than I expected. And that's it. A um, few things that I would do differently. I don't think I would focus that much on doing the CMS forms. Maybe I would do the last three forms only. I wouldn't do all the you all the step three. I would just do the biostatistics and research and communication and the prognosis ones. Because I found some of the endocrine, for example, or cardiology, was just pushing it a little bit. Um, I wouldn't do all the second bus of Ambos because I found that I already memorized all the questions and I was just picking the question uh, from my memory. I would just maybe do the high yield blends in Ambos only. And uh, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching and hopefully this video will help someone out there and bye bye.